Okay. You screen sharing. Okay. So we have a lot of participants. I just see like the numbers going up high. Oh yeah, um, look at that. You see it too? Yeah. Um, what was I gonna tell you? So maybe when it's over, we could do we need to do we do you want to do it through email? Uh yeah, so um got my email address? I got your email address. So I just want to know um, the, the dates, the, the breakdown of like, okay, so it's March 18, this time to this time, the breakdown, and also if there's attendance, like what the attendance is looking like. Yep, I will send you an update. Thank you so much, Vivian. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> just can everyone hear us? If you can hear us, please type yes in the chat. Beautiful. Oh, okay, we're, okay, we're I'm going to see how to press record. Oh, pause recording. I think it's already recording. OK, that's great. Yeah, it looks like it's already recording. It's giving the option to pause recording, stop recording. OK, so it must be already recording. OK, so you ready to go? Yeah, is it possible, though, for people um, to, if they want to share their screen so we can make it a little bit more interactive and I can see people? Um, I don't think so because we're on like a webinar setting instead of a Zoom setting. Okay. Okay. So it will be just me. Okay. I hope it will be interactive. I, I, people could please feel free to um, to send questions. Uh, Vivian, is it possible if people send questions that you can just know what the questions are? Yes, I will. I will interrupt. Do you want me to interrupt you when people ask questions? Yeah, once I finish, uh, you know, yes, absolutely. I want it to be as engaging as possible. So if people could, um, you know, could let me know what, what they think and what's going on. Okay, questions. perfect. Okay, so we are, okay, so I want this to be engaging because uh, hopefully it will be because I know that we're in a webinar setting and um, I usually like to see the, the attendees and speak to them and ask them questions. But let's try to make this as engaging as possible. Uh, Vivian, are you going to introduce me? I will introduce you. Okay, sure. All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the info session, Sell Like a Pro in a Virtual World. My name is Vivian, and I will be the moderator for this session. I would like to begin with the land acknowledgement. McGill University is on land which has long served as a site of meeting and exchange among Indigenous peoples including the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe nations. We acknowledge and thank the diverse Indigenous peoples whose presence marks this territory on which peoples of the world now gather. And now some housekeeping. Um, if you have some questions, you can write them in the chat field and I will interrupt Robert and read them out loud. And this session is recorded. A little bit about Robert. Robert Wise is a professional and personal certified coaching uh, Robert has effectively employed a surefire blend of education, work experience, and an insatiable passion for success to become a phenomenon in the realm of self-help. He is the president and CEO of Wise Sale Coaching, a top drawer company servicing all industries and senior levels, independently growing operations from the ground up. Robert has created launched and co-founded the acclaimed Rise Anxiety and Depression Clinic, putting viable drug-free solutions at the fingertips of individuals, couples, and families. Robert's breakout book, How to Sell the Wise Way, was released in 2018 and offers new and exciting wisdom in order to help with business and life goals. Here now is Robert. Thank you, Vivian. So um, this is going to be an interesting, um, an interesting webinar. For those who are not familiar with me, um, like Vivian said, I do, I do um, own actually. I, I am president now of an anxiety and depression clinic for mental health. And people don't know this, but my background before I became a mental health, let's just say, guru, um, I was in sales and business and marketing. So my passion is, you know helping people create a successful way of selling. Um, there's, there is a way to sell. There is um, a, a successful way to sell. 
And I've been very successful in the ability to know how to sell and teach people how to sell, even before I was talking about mental health and talking about anxiety and stress and all of those things, I was selling like a pro. So I'm really excited to do a sales workshop. I haven't done one in, in actually, I've, I've not done one for McGill yet. So I'm very excited to help you with your sales. Um, we'll go into the presentation. Um, this presentation is going to cover B2B sellers, but I'm going to put it into like two parts. And what I mean by that is I'm going to talk about how to be successful doing B2B. And also, if you already have a B2B business, how to be successful with that B2B business. So this will help you also how to stand out with B2B and also how to make your B2B even more efficient and successful. So we'll, we'll kind of do it in two parts, um, but we're going to cover um, lots of material today. Uh, so again, if you have any questions, please um, let me know and Vivian will read it out. So we're going to talk about um, you know, how to accelerate the success of your e-commerce channel. And if you don't have an e-commerce channel and you're looking to do B2B, this is going to help you. This part's going to help you with that, um, whether or not you have um, a B2B commerce. So the future is virtual. And that is a fact. We are now into a virtual future. And virtual sales is huge. It's really big. Um, you know, I, when I was first doing um, my, my sales work when I was younger, um, it was all face-to-face. -face. I did so much face-to-face -face, uh, sales. I used to go to conventions. I used to go to, I was a brand ambassador. I did so much sa sale, sales face-to-face. -face. But now the new reality is we are living in a virtual world. And a virtual world is exciting, but also very, um, I don't want to use the word polluted, but quite overwhelming. Lots and lots of people filled, filled, filled. So how do you stand out? is really the big issue here is we live in a very um, consuming, I mean, if you go to the internet and you do a Google search on, uh, you know, on something, there's tons of competition and tons of people. How do people find you? How do they know about you? How do you stand out? And I'm gonna give you some tips right now. You absolutely wanna show your prospects and clients that you value their time. So if you do have a meeting with somebody this is a really key point. That's why I want to put it almost right away is we tend to want to talk long um, and really try to sell. But in doing that, you're also not respecting the, the prospect's time. So I'm going to ask you to please manage your time with your prospects. So if you have a meeting for one hour, make it 50 minutes. Have that in your mind that you respect and you value their time. And that's why it's really important that I think what happens is we want to sell so badly. We want to get that sale so badly that we'll go over time if we have a meeting that's scheduled. It doesn't show that you value their time. And it also doesn't show that you value your time. So sometimes less is more. And that's why I give that as a, I get that a lot from people that I'm trying to sell. I give so much of my time and I don't get the sale. It's not about how long it is. It's about how efficient you are during that meeting. So uh, 60 minutes, my, my advice is 60 minutes, keep it 50 minutes, 30 minutes, keep it 25 minutes, just so you're respecting the time, their time and your time. These are the five must-have skills for B2B sales success. There's actually a lot more than this, but I only have a short period of time. Marketing is number one. You need to be able to market and brand yourself. That is a key component. In 2021, marketing is huge. That is your key component to success. How are you marketing yourself? How are you branding yourself? How are you showing your brand? Number two is your unique value proposition. Like I said before, we're living in a very oversaturated market. How are you standing out? What is your UVP, your unique value proposition? I will give you a tool to help you find that actually, because that's key. And when you do your marketing, when you do your branding, you want to make sure that you're displaying your UVP. What makes you stand out? How am I different? What can I offer that maybe my competitors don't offer? Or maybe I could offer differently. Um, number three is customer service slash client care. It is super important that we value the client and that we take care of them. I don't know why customer service is not being more valued anymore, but it's extremely important. I value when I am taken care of. So if, if um, somebody is calling you, return their call. Um, if they're not happy, find out what's going on. Let's give very high quality customer service. We need to value our client. 
and adaptability. Adaptability is actually a very good sign of mental health as well as B2B sales success. Adaptability is the ability to adapt to change, be flexible, adapt to things. Yes, Vivian. Uh, we have a question. Sure. Um, when talking about marketing, UVP, et cetera, is this from the salesperson's perspective or the product perspective? I would say from, that's a great question. I would say from both. It depends on what you're selling. Are you selling yourself? Or are you selling a product? Or are you selling both? Could you elaborate actually on that question? Because that's a great question. It's really depending on what you're selling, how you're going to market it. Am I, what am I selling? I, for me, I'm selling, I do a lot of selling my knowledge, my, my skill set. Um, people have, are selling t-shirts. Uh, people are selling you know, lots of different things. So we need to be able to market what we're trying to sell. Is there is the person elaborate, Vivian? Um, they have not elaborated yet. Okay. If they do, well, uh, there's no other question. Okay, perfect. But that, to answer that question, it really depends. It depends on what you're selling, is what, is what you're marketing. So again, adaptability, flexibility, being able to adapt to change. We are in a new market. We are in a new situation. We have to adapt to it. I hear so many people saying, oh, I don't want to be online. I like face-to-face. -face. I'm not good with technology. I'm not good with this. You need to be adaptable. Do not avoid. A lot of times we avoid things and that actually hurts our sales success. We will avoid, oh, I don't want to do a Zoom meeting. Oh, I'm not good on Zoom. I'm not good on this. Oh, I can't sell like this. That's your mindset. That's not what we're going to talk about today, but also be mindful about how you're speaking to yourself because if you're telling yourself things like, I can't do this, this is not going to work, this is too hard, it's going to affect your sales success ability. And that is actually known as self-sabotage. Key, key, key component number five is time management. You need to be good with your time. How are you using your time? How are you scheduling your time? What's your time being used for? Are you putting your time in the right places? So it's really important that we are aware of how we are using our time and how we are managing it because sometimes we spend a lot of time on something that doesn't bring in any money or any sales. And we are like, why are we doing that? Why are we spending time here when maybe it'd be more effective to spend time here? So be mindful of how you are time managing. So how to create a B2B social media strategy. This is a very common question that my clients who are in uh, B2B and B2C um, ask me. Um, how do, I, how do I build my social media strategy? How do I stand out? How do I know people, how do I let people know I exist through social media? So this is where I'm going to ask you to do a little bit of self-reflection. If you have a pen and paper, it would be great. I'll give you some notes on what to do here. Um, you need to know your competition. And you need to know, uh, very important, you need to know your competition, um, who is your competitors, and you need to know your SWOT, your S-W-O-T. This is a crucial uh, tool that needs to be done. Before anything else, you need to do your S-W-O-T. And that stands for your strengths, your weaknesses, your opportunities, and your threats. So your S, your strength, where are you strong? Where are you doing really great? I'm strong in this, this, this. I have this, this, this. This is where I'm strong. Where am I weak? I don't have enough staff. I don't have enough exposure. I don't have this type of product that people are looking for. So that's where you're weak. Where are your opportunities? Um, who do I know? Who can help me? Who would benefit from my services? Who's out there that I need to align with? What are my opportunities? And then what are my threats? Who are my threats? That's your competitors, right? Who is doing what you're doing or something similar to what you're doing? Who are they? You need to know them. What are they doing? Uh, this is really important. We don't do this enough. It's a social media audit. Yes, we need to do a social media audit. Sometimes our social media is so polluted and so with such wrong, wrong information or misinformation or, you know, has a wrong URL or a username here and then another username there. So here's how you're going to do your social media audit. You're going to make sure that your URL is in your social media, all of your social media. That's your website. So make sure that your URL is in all your social media platforms. So it's like TikTok, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Make sure your URL is there. Make sure your profile name is consistent. Consistency is key. 
What is your username, your profile name, your description? Is it up to date? Do you have new products, new services that are not there? And make sure that your description, again, is all accurate wherever you go. One line, you have something here, then you have something there. It's not consistent. Followers. Who are your followers? How many followers do you have? Are you gaining new followers? Take note of your followers. Take note of your engagement. Where are you at? How many followers do you have? How many people are you following? Who's following you? All of this. Take note. Date of your last activity. When were you last on social media? Which social media platforms are you not using? When have you, you know, if you don't use them, they look, they start to look stale. So make sure that you're being consistent. If there's a social media platform that you're not using, maybe you don't need it. It's better not to have it than to not use it for like five years. Set up accounts and improve profiles. Make sure that your profiles are really clean, really concise really accurate and that your content is really clean. And I would also brand your content. Um, every time you post, I would brand your post, put your website, put a way for people to reach you. So if it gets shared, they know um, how to reach you or who, who posted that. Um, create a social media content calendar. This is a, I've been told this and I do this. Um, what's your plan? I'm on TikTok now. My plan is every second day I have a video. I'm on YouTube. My plan is every Wednesdays and Sundays, I post my video. Facebook, daily posts. What's your calendar like for social media? Again, I, mean, I cannot stress enough how consistency is key. If you want to be successful, you need to be consistent. Don't start something and drop it. If you start Robert, I have two questions for you. Um, should your profile name be your name or a unique name? It should be the name. Um, it should be the name that is associated with your business. So a unique name that's not associated with your business is not going to help you. So if you're selling, um, if you're selling shoes, and you're calling yourself the Whiz Kid, um, I'm not putting. You know, I would I would align it with what you're selling, so people recognize it. Like, what is put your brand in the name? Somehow put uh, associate your name with your brand. Whiz Kid shoes or the, something to get people to know what you do. And when they hear your slogan, they know, okay, he's selling shoes. Okay, they're selling this. Okay, it's kind of like, you need to make it relevant. It needs to be, you need, everything needs to be done with a purpose. So don't just do something to do it, do it properly. Do it with a strategy, be a strategist. Remember, you're trying to send digital breadcrumbs. You want to bring people to your business. So that's called digital breadcrumbs. So you want to create those breadcrumbs or get people to come to you for what you're selling, whether it's a product or a service. Okay. And would you suggest the SM username needs to be the name of the company or would you lean towards including keywords that describe what the company does? I would do both. Um, I'll give you a great example. Um, for me, um, I use, so I call myself on social media, the wise way coach. So I want to be associated with the wise way coach. I want to be associated with coaching. And in my description, I use the keywords. So keywords are very important. Keywords are the way to help with your SEO or help you be unique. So in your description, I would absolutely make sure that you use your keywords to describe your business. I am selling, um, we are in the business of selling shoes to local businesses. We are a retailer or we, we sell businesses at a very low wholesale price. Uh, make sure that you're using keywords to describe your product in your description and your username is relevant to your business and what you are selling. So you're, you don't have to put the keywords into your, you don't have to put tiny keywords into your name, but absolutely you want your description to be efficient and you want it to be very much pro what you do and how you can help. And keep it short. Again, from when I started this presentation, we think more is more, actually less is more. Be, be, be a little time. We are in a market like this. So be clear, concise, and quick. Make sure that the words you're using are keywords and they're short and they're efficient and I know what you're selling. I know how you're going to help me. Very important that your description is going to tell me how you are going to help me. I'm a business, you're a business, how is your business gonna help my business? How are you going to help my business is what I wanna know, B to B. And I would suggest for everybody who's watching, absolutely use LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a really key, this is my strategy. LinkedIn is a really key uh, component for B2B, business to business. You can connect with some really good business people on LinkedIn. I also would suggest writing a blog, really good articles with what you do, how you help businesses. 
I would actually, I'm going to give you a really amazing strategy that has worked for me and has gotten me long. I actually have over 10,000 connections on LinkedIn and they're all real. Um, how I did it was I will suggest that you go to a person that you um, has a market that a, a, a big person, a big personality um, who has a big following. And I would comment on their comments. Uh, excuse me. So I would comment. If someone writes comments, I would comment on those comments. So that brings people who are aware of you and start to engage with you on LinkedIn. And they're going to start to connect with you. And they're going to start to see what you do. So by you commenting and you engaging on people's comments, you're bringing a lot of awareness and a lot of digital breadcrumbs back to you. This has really, really, really worked for me. I will be very honest with you. I think I got about... Oh my goodness, I think I got it. I was like at 8,500 and I got about 10,000 in less than a week, about 150 new followers just by commenting and sharing. And I got lots of personal messages like, oh, I saw what you do. I'm interested in some of the things that you offer. It's a great tool. You don't just use social media just to post. Engage, comment, share, make sure that people feel like you're interested in what they're saying, what they're doing. Um, and you want to make sure that you're also commenting on people's comments who have a similar interest in following to what you're doing. So you also need to be strategic. You don't want to just follow some random person and write comments on their posts or comments to comment. Look for somebody who is like-minded and has the people that you would be interested in, in engaging with as well. I hope this is clear because this has been key for my success on uh, LinkedIn and social media. Um, so that brought up three additional questions. Okay. Um, is quantity really better than quality when posting? Uh, absolutely. Uh, is quantity better than quality? Absolutely not. Um, but I will tell you this, I would post frequent quality. I will post frequent, but quality. So I would like both. I would like quality and frequency. So quality and, uh, quality and quantity. So the point is here is that you do need to post a lot. You need to be visible and seen. So I, a lot of times we get into our head, okay, I can't post unless it's really quality. I'm going to wait. Post frequently, quality posts. Some quality, but make sure it's frequent because what happens is with the algorithms for social media, if you stop posting, it starts to drop. But by being consistent, you'll start to see more engagement. Um, the social media treats you the way you treat it. If you use it and you share things, they'll make you higher up in the algorithm. So you definitely need to be frequent. This is why I would be strategic and maybe spend a, a few hours creating your weekly posts of what I want to post, what I want to share, and this way I can do it frequently. I'm not saying you have to do it every day, but maybe every second day. Let's try to do at least four to five posts a week. I know that might sound like a lot, but we're also talking about, I'll be honest with you, you also need to post based on this, on the, uh, we're getting to this point, customize your content. You can't post what you're posting on Twitter on what you're posting on LinkedIn. You can't use the same hash, hashtags you're using on Twitter as you are on LinkedIn because you're engaging on different ways of talking to people. Everything has a different feel. So it's like you're going into different rooms. So you're not going to be the way you are on TikTok the way you're going to be on LinkedIn. So you want to make sure that you're customizing your content for the social media platforms you're using. So it's really important. A lot of times you just post everything on every platform, the same thing, same hashtag, same everything. The problem with that also is your tags. They don't work. The way you tag a person on LinkedIn is not the way you would tag that person on Twitter. So the problem with just, okay, I'm just going to post the same thing on everything is it's not going to work. And it looks like it's a cut and paste. And to me, cut and paste does not look good. I want it to look like that's why I make sure that my hashtags are consistent, that my, um, my tags are consistent. If I'm tagging someone on Instagram, I'm using their Instagram name. If I'm tagging them the same person on LinkedIn, I'm using their LinkedIn name because a lot of times it's different. A lot of time, your LinkedIn name and your Instagram name and your Twitter name and Facebook name to be different. That you are customizing your content. Remember, this is your brand. This is your brand. And you need to value your brand and you need to respect your brand. So the way to respect your brand is to make sure it's, it's clean, it's accurate, it's consistent, and it's customized. Okay, um, the next question is, when getting started, it seems overwhelming to start promoting on social media. Any advice on how to avoid being overwhelmed and staying focused one step at a time? That's a great question, and it could be overwhelming. It really could be overwhelming. So what I would suggest is, um, this is a very important strategy, create a plan. Take a pause and just create a plan. 
what do I need to do first? Which social media platforms do I want to be on? You don't need to be on all of them right away. So I would choose first for everybody who's watching today. Um, I would choose LinkedIn. If you if you need to choose your first um, social media B two B because we're talking B two B here, I would choose LinkedIn. I mean, what better platform than people who are in business to be on than LinkedIn? So I would put my focus first, so you don't get overwhelmed because there's lots. It's never ending. I mean, now there's also Clubhouse, which I don't, which I also would recommend that people join if they don't have it. Clubhouse, um, it's a way to also engage with business people and entrepreneurs. Um, but I would start with LinkedIn first, and then I would start with what do I want to share on LinkedIn? Um, what kind of posts do I want to share? But actually, I just overstepped. Before we even go there, how's your LinkedIn profile look? Do you also have a business LinkedIn page? Another very important tool is do you have a business LinkedIn page? So when you put your um, bio and everything and your um, all your work, you need to have a link to your business LinkedIn page in which you specifically post for your business. And you can invite a lot of people onto that page, which is also gonna help bring business to you because that is, that is specifically people who are following your business page, which means they're most likely interested in your services. So um, really important that your LinkedIn profile is clean Make sure that your bio is clean. Make sure that your your um, everything's up to date. That you have a picture, a clear picture. Make sure that you have a backdrop. So my Instagram, my excuse me, my LinkedIn is an all-star profile. The way LinkedIn works is that you have fields that, as long as that you make, meet these fields, they consider you an all-star profile. So you want to make sure that your profile is an all-star profile. Fill in all the components: your skills, what you do, your pictures everything and also do um, connect with people who you believe could help you start to try to get at least 500 connections and try to create your linkedin profile to be um, all stars so what i'm the way i'm answering this question is put your focus on one platform at a time and make that the best possible way once you have that done then you can go to the next platform so my suggestion for all of you today is make sure number one that your linkedin profile is clean up to date it looks good. Remember, it's representing you create a business LinkedIn page. Really important to create a business profile as well for your LinkedIn and make sure those are clean. Then I would take a pause and say, okay, what's the first thing I want people to know about my business? What do I want to post about? Remember when you're posting, you want people to know how you can help them. So make your post engaging and interesting and how you help people. Like a, maybe a client story. I had a client who was looking for a really good price on this and I was teaching, I that you know we offer these this and this and it really helped with, with help them find their solution they were looking for at a very affordable rate if you want to know more information check out our website so it's really okay to post about what you do and how you help people and put your website that's what we're here for we're trying to create awareness we're trying to create buzz we're trying to create people to know that we exist there is no shame in selling i think that what what happens is that we were scared to sell or we're like oh i know people think i'm trying to sell you're not trying to sell you're trying to help and the name of this is sell like a pro. And I'm going to tell you how to sell like a pro. Don't sell. That's how you're going to sell like a pro. Don't sell help. You're not a salesperson. You are a trusted consultant. That's how you sell like a pro by not selling, by helping. I'm going to tell you a story of how I help. That's what you're going to post. Here's how we help. Show reviews. Show how you've helped previous clients. I'm going to help you. That's how I'm going to come in to my social media, how I can help you. And in doing that, I'll offer some tips, some strategies, so maybe some fun videos. Maybe I'll even show a video of me, you know, um, putting together a product. That's how you're going to sell. You're going to help. And that's what you're going to show on social media, how I help you, how my business is going to help your business. Yes. Um, okay. So we have now five or six other questions. Okay. Um, do you want to continue on and we'll answer them at the end or would you like maybe to continue we'll, answering you know them? Let me, let me just, um, I'm going to, let me start to get to more, more content and then we'll answer them. I just want to get a little bit further on in the presentation. So videos and demos matter more than ever and your presentation does matter. You want to communicate professionalism and ensure your clients and prospects can see you at your best. When you're doing Zoom, when you're doing videos, make sure that you do them with quality. I would encourage you to follow me or at least look at what I do. You'll see that everything I do is in quality. It's all quality. I will not put out um, um, dark videos, um, spelling mistakes, um, things that are grainy. I'm not asking you to spend a fortune on marketing. 
I'm asking you to make sure that you take care of your presentation because you are representing yourself. Do not just put things out just to put them out and make sure it's done properly, respectfully, respect your brand, respect your business. So everything I put out is very respectful of who I am and how I want to be perceived. So that's why it's really important that you take the time to uh, make sure that you're presenting yourself, your business in a way that respects your brand. That's part of marketing, by the way, as, which as I said, is the number one skill set in 2021 that you need to have, especially since online is so huge. Um, we also, the, ch the change in B2B buying expectations. So B2B buyers typically want to spend less time and energy on researching and completing purchases. So you want to make sure that you stand out from your competition and make sure customers stay with you. And the way to do that is make things really simple for your clients. I'm going to show you three ways to make a successful B2B commerce experience for your clients. So this is to help you if you already have B2B clients. I mean, we all want more, of course, I understand. But if you do have them, you want to keep them. So I'm going to give you three really quick strategies on how to make a successful B2B commerce experience. Number one, be efficient. Okay? Make sure that there's an efficiency. Once the contract is agreed on, B2B buyers generally have to do the same task each month, such as check out order statuses. Uh, ensure payment was processed and reordered. Make sure these are the easiest things to do on your site so your delivery is easy, it's simple, it's efficient, and it saves them time. Informed. Very important. And whether you're a manufacturer or a distributor, you probably know more about your products than your buyers. So connect the dots for them. Make sure they're informed. Link them to related content, data sheets, and products so that they understand exactly what they need. Make things easy for them, clear. Number three, accessible. Make sure your site looks good on any device. So you want to make sure that on Apple, it looks good. On um, the other one, Android, it looks good. On your PC, it looks good. Um, and it's easy to use and it's easy to access. Um, you want to make sure that everything is just really clean, clear, and easy to use. People will not want to stay with you if it's complicated. If it's, oh, I don't know how to use this. Oh, it's not working on my phone. Oh, I have to go to my PC to use it. So you want to make sure that it's very clear on all devices. With these three points, companies can create online buying experiences that help them stand out and grow their accounts over time. If you follow these three steps, you may very well get referrals. People refer people. That's also a great way to get more clients. Be easy to use. I give referrals all the time when I like a, a website and it's easy to use. If I'm buying from your company and you're easy to use, it doesn't matter what you're selling, and I like it and I'm using it, I will tell people about it. I will say, you know, this, this website's great. It's easy to get this, this, this. They're really efficient. They're really making things easy. That's why I follow these three points. They're pretty important. They're really important. And I'm going to tell you again, for people who are in BT, B2B, you already have your B2B commerce. Everything is already there. Make sure that your catalog is simplified. I've gone to so many B2B. I've done so much B2B business. And there's overwhelming amount of information. Most B2B sellers have massive catalogs that are hard to navigate. So create categories and product names based on how customers identify products. B2B sellers can improve discovery and make searching a catalog more intuitive if it's easy to use and if it's simplified. You don't need to put a billion things there. Just simplify it, categorize it, make it easy. Simplify your catalog so it's easy for me to use. And your, of course, your, your, client, your potential clients and clients. Clear product content. B2B buyers increasingly, increasingly do the majority of their research online without talking to a sales rep. That's part of the, the new situation now. You don't have a sales rep selling. So make this easier with detailed product information, related content, technical specifications, and how-to documents. Make it clear. Make it efficient. Make it look good. Don't overload buyers with information. Just give it to me what I need to know. Clear, concise. That's a really key component to success, make it clear, make it use. This is for every, everybody who already has a B2B commerce site. Optimize for B2B complexity. There are a lot of account settings that need to happen in the background for B2B buyers, including contract products and pricing, workflow approval, providing access and permissions to different roles within the buying team. All of this needs to be configured in your digital commerce site so that buyers don't need to think about it. They don't want to have to think about all of this. This needs to be easy. So when they log in, they should only see products and pricing that apply to them. 
purchases should automatically move through the correct approval workflows. Make it easy for your client. If you want to keep them, you want them to refer, make it easy. Simplify, don't make it complex. Let it be easy. They log in and everything is there for them. Make referring easy, not complicated. Again, let's simplify things. We think that over information is better. It's not. Remember, now we're selling in a virtual world. So now people need to do a lot of things on their own. They're going to come to your website and we need to make it as easy as possible for them as possible. B2B buyers have many tasks that they need to do every month, such as reordering or restocking retained products. If they have to go through the search process every month to create opportunities for them, you're creating, excuse me, you're creating opportunities for them to say, you know what, this is too much. I just want to find a, uh, I just want to find a company that just makes it easy for me. So remember what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make you stand out and make it easy for your client so they don't do the research and find somebody else. Remember, we're selling online. Very easy for someone to say, you know what, this is really hard. Reordering is not easy. Let me just see what this person, how maybe this is easier. So we don't want to give them a reason. We do not want to give them a reason to go elsewhere. You need to stand out. You need to be the go-to and you need to keep them. And the way to do that is make things easy. Easy for them. Oh, I like this. I like this and I, I tell this to my clients. Let's try to make it like one click, like just one click away to make your life so simple. You want to reorder? Easy. Activate 24-7 self-service. One of the major benefits of digital commerce is being able to offer 24-7 self-service. This allows buyers to manage orders on their own, schedule and, and take the burden off of sales to answer unexpected questions. Buyers know what they need at the moment they need it. Self-service also provides new opportunities. So just make sure that you have self-service 24-7. We have your questions. You have a question. You have a concern. Make sure that they know they're in good hands at all hours of the night. Empower your sales reps. So if you do have sales reps, don't neglect the direct sales channel. Self-service is great, but you may want to provide a more personal touch for high value accounts, especially if you have very common products or a broad catalog. Many B2B buyers still expect to collaborate with sales reps on orders and value the unique insight their experience can bring. So just make sure that your, your sales reps are knowledgeable. There is nothing worse, I will be honest, than a sales rep who doesn't know what they're talking about, doesn't build confidence, doesn't build um, trust. So make sure that your sales reps are aware, they know what products are coming out, they know what different services you're offering, and they're up to date. Your sales reps are still uh, really important to helping up the sell or get more sales. So really want to make sure that your sales reps know what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna take some questions. Okay, um, so are you writing your blog on LinkedIn or on another platform? Am I writing my blog on LinkedIn or another platform? Great question, I'm a strategist. So I'll tell you what I do. And I would actually just, I would actually really encourage you to check me out to see what I, what I do, because I, I do, I'm strategic. So what I used to do is I used to post directly on LinkedIn. I used to do my blog directly on LinkedIn and if you check me out, you'll see that's what I used to do. But not anymore, no. Now I'm a strategist, now I'm even more of a strategist. Now what I do is on my website, I create my blog. So if you go to robertwisecoach.com, you're gonna see that I have a blog. So I will take the link from the blog that I wrote on my website, I will take that link, put it onto LinkedIn and I'm gonna bring you back to my site. So you're on LinkedIn and you're gonna to come to my website to see my blog. And that way you're going to see my information. You're going to might say, oh, this is interesting. He has other blogs too. He has other information. So what you want to do, and I want you to keep this in mind, all about bringing people back to you. So I would suggest do your blog if you have a website from your website. First of all, number one, it adds keywords. as so great for SEO. And number two, you share the link. You could put it on LinkedIn. You could put it on Facebook. And you're bringing the people back to you. Strategist. Make sure that your, your digital breadcrumbs are going your way. Not to LinkedIn, to you. That's what you want to do. You want to build your brand. Um, so the next question is, how do you use social media frequently without affecting your mental health or worsening anxiety? How do you use frequently without affecting your mental health? OK, so that's a great question, and I'm a mental health expert. Um, it does not need to mental health. Um, nothing um, should have the power to affect your mental health. 
So if it's affecting your mental health, it's something that you're thinking about it that's, that's affecting your mental health. So what about social media is making you anxious? What about this is making you anxious? Is it about having to post? Is it about feeling there's too much competition? And what I would do is I would challenge those thoughts. Um, I'm doing this for my business. Um, it's okay if I'm, if I would challenge it. It's okay if I start small. It's okay if I just post one thing at a time. Um, make sure that you're managing your self-talk. One of, um, one of the key, I, so I wrote a book on sales and um, one of the, the really important skill sets that I talk about is your mindset and not falling into the, um, the fear mind which is, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if this is, this is just too much for me. What if they don't like it? What if I say something stupid? What if I'm not posting enough? What if I'm posting too much? So that will affect your mental health if you scare yourself or worry about things. So my suggestion is take a step back. What is it that's causing you stress and anxiety about posting? There's no reason to be stressed or anxious about it. You're just trying to keep in mind, you're trying to build your business, you're trying to build your brand, and that's what your plan is. So you could do that in a way that doesn't make you feel overwhelmed, doesn't make you feel stressed, and just make sure that you keep your, your, your mind and your, your thoughts focused on why you're doing it and what you're doing it for, not about other people, but about you. Don't make this about other people. Oh, they have so many followers. They have so many this, because that can make you anxious and feel stressed. You don't have to compete with these people. You need to compete with you. One post is better than no post. So if you have one post and you've never posted, that's great. That's already good. It's already progress, okay? Your competition is you, actually. The person who's going to get in your way most often is yourself. And it's really important. It's why I like to mix sales and psychology is that at the end of the day, it's really about ourselves. When we don't post, when we don't do things, when our websites are not up to date, um, we're hurting ourselves. And I'm here to help empower you all. So you make sure that you are taking care of your brand and that you are building your brand and that you are not self-sabotaging. So if you want to sell like a pro, you need to think like a pro. And the way to think like a pro is don't let fear, don't let anxiety, don't let stress interfere in your success. Don't let it. Don't give it that power. You have the power to, to um, address this in a way that empowers you or scares you. It's your choice. There's, and I always say, there's nothing to be fearful about. Nothing to be fearful about. You are just posting. You're just building your business. That's all you're doing. Be excited, if anything, not scared. Be excited, not scared. You don't need to be scared. Be excited. It's exciting to build a business. It's exciting to grow your business. It's exciting to get people to know who you are. I have two, three businesses, actually. And I'm excited to grow it. And I'm excited to build it. And I know there's lots of competition out there, but it's... It's, it's the way I'm looking at it. I'm looking at it as something that's exciting, not scary. Okay, the next question is, I am often reposting material created by my organization without adding any notes. Is this a big no-no? Yes. Yes, it is a big no-no. Um, add at least, this is a great post. I hope, I, I'd like to share this with you all. Hope this helps give some insight. Check this out. Maybe do a couple of hashtags. Uh, just, uh, just, uh, it, 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 it just, just, it just shows again the problem with things like this. It, it doesn't show um, care. It shows okay. I'm just going to post to post. It's going to share to share. By you taking the time to write, hi everyone. Just wanted to share this great, you know, this great post. I thought would be helpful to all of you. Please take a note below. You're giving it time and effort. You're showing your audience why you're posting it. You're taking that time. I'm all about doing things with strategy. Take that extra time, it'll take you five seconds, but it looks so much more cared about than just sharing it. And I understand that, okay, I'm just sharing it, it's good enough. Add to it, add, absolutely. Personalize it. Hi everybody, hope this helps. Personalize your sharing. Make people feel you're there for them, that you care about them, that you're doing this for them. Okay, and uh, another question is, what do you recommend to use as a backdrop on LinkedIn? Do you recommend, mm -hmm. do you recommend to use your business uh, logo or a summary of your life plus business logo? I would use, um, that's a great question. So a lot of people use backdrops of the city or backdrops of a sunset. No, it's real estate. You're absolutely gonna use it to build your brand. Uh, so what I would suggest that you do is create a custom-made 
backdrop for your LinkedIn that maybe has your logo, maybe your slogan of what you do, but you're absolutely going to use your backdrop to back uh, to uh, promote yourself. It's real estate. You're going to use all your social media backdrops to uh, promote yourself. So you're going to customize it, make sure it fits properly. So make sure everything is aligned um, the way. And so the way LinkedIn is, you have your circle picture. You want to make sure that your backdrop doesn't cover your logo. I'm uh, sorry. You want to make sure that your circle picture of you doesn't cover your logo. So make sure that it's customized for LinkedIn in a way that um, brands you, maybe your slogan, maybe put a phone number, but definitely your brand. And definitely, um, I would put your brand and I would also put maybe your slogan. Like, we help with this. Um, definitely, absolutely. It's all about branding, marketing, and creating a really beautiful image of consistency and marketing and clarity and letting people know what you do. Uh, on everything, not just LinkedIn, everything, your Facebook, your Instagram, your everything. Brand, 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 brand. Market, 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 market. Okay, and um, the next question is, can you talk a little bit more about the Clubhouse app? So I'm gonna be honest, I'm so new to it. So I, I would love to tell you more about Clubhouse. From what I understand, and I just I just downloaded the app. It is a way for you to connect with people on different topics, entrepreneurs. Um, you basically join meetings and groups, um, and you could also uh, create rooms where you could talk about things that you know about, and people could join your room. It's really where a lot of people are at right now. I don't know enough about it. I haven't really used it. I've used it maybe two times. Um, I, I'm on everything, and I just started on. Um, I just started with Clubhouse. So I don't know enough about it to really give you much insight, except the fact that I know it's very popular. A lot of people use it. I am on it. Feel free to connect with me. It is a way to connect with different people. It's all about rooms. It's just it's just voice recognition. It's just speaking. No one sees you. And um, that's really all I know about it. But it's, it's really an interesting tool. And I absolutely highly recommend that everybody who's watching today absolutely download the uh, Clubhouse app. It is the next level thing that people are doing. It's absolutely going to be the next big thing and get in on it now. So Clubhouse, uh, absolutely recommend it. Um, I also recommend, I know this doesn't sound weird, but I do recommend TikTok. I'm on TikTok. Uh, TikTok is where people's focus are at right now. So I do recommend that you go on TikTok. But again, I don't want to overwhelm anybody. Start with LinkedIn and work your way. Um, work your way. Work your way. And I think TikTok probably is, you know, if you're a business to business, I'll be honest with you, probably not the best platform, although it's where a lot of people are at. Um, I would do I would do an order LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram as my top three for business to business. And then maybe go to your your TikTok. I, I do think it's important on every platform because um, I, I'm gonna quote Gary V a really famous, really big time business coach. If you're not seen, you don't exist. So you want to be seen, you want to be known, you want to be visible. So I would say be everywhere, but not in a way that overwhelms you. Start slow, start with one thing at a time. You don't have to do it once. And that's where we get our anxiety. We have to do it all now. You do not have to do it all now. Start slowly, start consistently, start now, but you don't have to do it all at once. Um, the next question is, writing a blog versus creating a short video on YouTube, are the results and target audiences very different, or is one way preferred? I didn't hear you. Writing a blog? I, sorry, what, what was the question? Uh, writing a blog versus creating a short video on YouTube, are the results and target audiences very different? Is one way preferred? Oh, that's such a good question. So that's a great question. I prefer, this is my preference, okay, from what I see. You want to build your credibility and you want to build your brand. So my, from what I see and what I recognize as really valuable is video content. So I would prefer, and I think people do, I, and I, I'm, I'm here, I, I might be 100% accurate here. For me, I prefer video content. I think that, um, it has more value in that it shows who you are. It shows the way you present yourself. Uh, it also shows how authoritarian you are in your knowledge. And you could like, people click videos quickly. People love videos, we're online. People love to pick and play something quickly. So I think that 
I would, I would encourage you to absolutely create a YouTube channel, which I'll talk about quickly after. I would absolutely um, encourage you to create a video, put it on YouTube, share the video of your knowledge, create a YouTube channel. That's nothing wrong with that. It's a pretty good idea to get on YouTube also and um, create a channel and create videos. Share the videos. Again, everything you want to do, you want to share it. Um, so for the YouTube videos, you want to share the link to your LinkedIn um, so people can watch the video. They'll go on YouTube and then can that build your views and it builds your, it builds your subscriptions. So to answer the question really clear, really easily, uh, videos, I love videos. I would absolutely do videos, but I would also still do your blogs. Um, I think videos are more effective. I do just because we are in a digital world and people just are like this. But I think that there's definitely place for blogs too. And blogs are great for keywords. So I'm going to say do both, but I would absolutely, if you have to prioritize, I would say do a video. If you have to choose one to start with, I would choose video is key. And we're in 2021. Video really is the way to go. It, it really is the way to go. Video. And use it for your website too. I'd also, I'd also put a video on your website uh, as well. Video is key. It's great. Um, so the next question is, what tips would you give us for qualifying leads in digital sales? Ask uh, qualifying leads, that's a great question. You, have to, you need to ask qualifying questions. Um, first, you want to make sure you're talking to the right person. Um, are you the decision maker? That's a great, great question. To qualify is to ask questions, to um, have a series of questions that you would need, like what's your budget? Do you have a budget? What's your need? What's your product? What's your demand? Uh, ask a lot. I would ask qualifying questions to qualify your lead. Um, I get that. I, I've, I work with so many companies who, you know, they would ask this very same question. And I would say, sometimes you're talking to the wrong person and then you lose the sale. And they come to me and like, well, I feel so bad. I spent so much time trying to close the sale. And I turned out it wasn't the decision maker. Know from the start, know right from the beginning who the person is you're talking to, their budget. You need to know, do you have a budget? What's your budget? And are you the decision maker? That's how you qualify, asking qualifying questions. Get contact name, phone number, email, get their website, get the details. Ask the questions. And I would encourage you all to create a qualifying list of questions to ask to qualify a person because you definitely need to qualify them or you're going to waste your time. I've wasted my time many times before talking to the wrong person and at the end of the day, it was all for nothing. So yeah, yes, qualify. Questions. OK, so the next is a two-part question. Okay. Um, for e-commerce, are there certain hashtags that you would really, that would really give you more exposure than others? And is there a place or website you'd recommend that actually tracks what type of hashtags are getting more exposures than others? You could do, this is a great question. Um, I would say that your hashtags need to be um, consistent to what you're trying to sell and what you do. So I would use hashtags that are, I'm gonna tell you the best way to do this. Look at your competitors. Look at your competitor, your big people. Look at the big people, the big players. What hashtags are they using? What are they, what kind of engagement are they doing? That's really a best way to know which kind of hashtags to use is basically what are your competitors doing? It's part of when you do your SWAT, your strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. What are your competitors doing? Um, is there a website? That's a great question. I'm not sure, if, I'm sure there is. I'm not sure I haven't checked on um, if there's a, I basically do my hashtags based on um, what I do, my services. So I would do like, I would do hashtag e-commerce, hashtag if I did e-commerce, which I do actually, I have an online mental health website. So I do e-commerce. Um, I would put online therapy, I would put mental health. So you want to stick to key hashtags that are relevant. And for the person who asked me the question, relevant hashtags. That I know is key. Don't just do hashtags just to do hashtags. Make sure your hashtags are relevant to what you do. So, um, you know, sale, um, you know, if you're selling machines, machine sales, um, if you're selling, you know, retail, uh, B2B, B2B industry, you know, relevant to what you do. And you don't need so many. I would, you don't need that many. And especially if you're on LinkedIn, it looks sloppy. Do like three or four. On Instagram, you can do like 10. But on LinkedIn, keep it like three or four. Twitter, three or four. 
Facebook, like, you know, like, don't put too many uh, because that also doesn't look good. But Instagram, you could do more, but make sure they're relevant. Relevant to your, to what you're selling, what you're doing. So the next question is, how do you keep yourself motivated when you haven't seen positive results in a while, despite putting in the effort? Okay, uh, this is a great um, how do you keep yourself motivated? Well, we don't want to fall into victim. So when we go, oh, I'm not seeing results, it's not working. Look at it like this. So don't if you're into that mindset of discouragement and else nothing's working and I, I don't know how to stay motivated. What can you do? What have you done? What could you do better? What's not working? Why is it not working? I'm always curious when something's not working. Why is it not working? Are you really doing everything that you could be doing? Or do you think you're doing it? Sometimes we put in our effort and we think I'm doing everything, I'm doing it all and I'm not getting results. But maybe what you're putting your effort and results in is not what you need to be doing. So I'm always curious about what's going on. How come it's not doing well? What could I be doing better? What could I be doing differently? Maybe there's another strategy I can try. So rather, so the way to stay motivated is to stay engaged, engaged in your productivity, engaged in your brand. What's, what, what else could I do? It's all about your mindset and about how you are perceiving things. If you're perceiving it as failure or discouragement, you're gonna feel that way. But sometimes something is not working just because it's not the right way or the right method, even though you think it might be, it might not be the right method. Try something different, try something new, try a different platform, um, connect with different people. If you, are, if you believe in your brand and you know it has a value, then there is always something you can do to create awareness and value to your brand and create people to be attracted to it. You just need to figure out what works for you, but do not give up. Giving up or getting into the, the mindset of, oh no, it's not gonna work, I've tried everything, is not gonna serve you, it's gonna keep you down and gonna sabotage you from actually doing things that can help the brand. Keep moving, keep going, just keep the key message. I'm doing this because I know my value, I know my brand has a value, I know I can do this, I need to do this, I want to do this, and I'm going to do this. If I gave up on my brand, I would have been out of business five years ago. There's tons of competition. There's tons of things that didn't work. Tons of things didn't work. I've lost tons of money. I've put money into tons of things that were a waste. You know, I still do that. I still pay for things. That I'm like, oh, why did I spend that money? It didn't do anything. I didn't get a sale from it. But then I'm like, you know what? But now more people know about my brand. So I don't look at things black or white. You know, I mean, I, I spent like $50 on an ad on Instagram. I didn't get anything from it. But I like, you know what? It got me about... 800 views, and now 800 people or whatever know who I am. Okay, it didn't get me a sale, but at least my brand is out there. It's all how you look at it. It's all your perception. Um, the next question is, is LinkedIn okay for small businesses? Yes, absolutely. Even better for small businesses. Even better. Absolutely. It's very, you, you could, um, you know, create awareness for your small business on LinkedIn. Absolutely. And um, again, for that person, make sure that you're creating a business, uh, base, uh, sorry, a LinkedIn business account for your business. And I would encourage you all to do this. Make sure that you're creating a business LinkedIn page as well as your face, as your, excuse me, as well as your LinkedIn profile page. Um, how long should the videos be when you upload them to YouTube? It depends on what you're doing. Um, Usually, if it's a quick tip, I would keep it as under a minute. You could also use it for your Instagram. So I would keep it under a minute if it's for a tip. If you're trying, if you're doing a demonstration, maybe keep it three to four minutes. It does not need to be long. And again, like I said before, short is okay. It does not have to be long. Um, so it depends on what you're what you're trying to convey in the message. But you want to keep it short. I would not do more than five minutes. I would keep it short and sweet. Um, what if you are a small business that gets too attached to their customers? Example, clients discuss personal things and it takes up a lot of time on a daily basis. Okay, so this is, I'm going to, uh, okay, this is a boundary. You need to know your boundary here. We don't want to cross a boundary with a client. We want to keep it professional. And when we start to cross boundaries, what ends up happening is we waste a lot of time. And also, they could also ask for like, you know, we're so close now. Is it possible I get a special deal? I think we need to keep that professionalism that I am the, the, the business, you are my client. I'm going to take really good care of you, but we're not friends. 
we're not friends. I'm not friends with my clients. And I have a lot of clients. I'm not friends with them. And I'm really good to them. Anybody who has ever worked with me knows I'm really good with them, really good to them. But we're not friends. We are not friends. We are not friends. We are, we have a relationship that is um, client and business, we're not friends. And when you start to engage in that, you start to cross that boundary, it's not good. It's not going to waste, you'll waste time. And also it's just, it's not, it's not, it's not good. It's not, it's not a healthy thing. You need to know your limitations. You need to know what is right and what's not going to be good for you. So I, I, I don't, you know what? I like the, it's a famous line. Don't mix business with pleasure. It's not, it's not even my line. It's a great line. Don't mix business with pleasure. They're not your friends. Um, next we have, do you have any tips, resources for style flexing while selling to clients? I Why is style I flexing? Can you hear I, me now? Okay, can you try it? It's echoing. Okay, can you, can you give me the question again? Do you have any tips or resources for style flexing while selling to clients? Why is style flexing important to you? I'm not familiar with this term, style flexing. I'm not even familiar with this term. Okay, uh, Jaylene, if you want to um, yeah, just you please elaborate. It. I, I'm not style flexing. I'm not familiar with this term. I, I'm not sure. I want to make sure I'm, 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 I kind of have an idea of what you mean, but I'm not sure. Okay, but I'll come back to it. Is there another question? Uh, yes. How do you build new relationships remotely, virtually, in a complex selling situation? Um, this is about heavy equipment industry. So how do you build relationships anywhere? It's networking. It's about engagement. It's about um, making new connections with people. So I, I, I'm going to tell you, because I work with, with um, lots of industries that sell this and um, lots of different things, uh, complex um, B2B business. Um, and I would suggest that, again, where are these people that you want to um, meet? Who are these people you want to meet? And I would go to places to connect with these people. I would, uh, it's like the way you would do it um, in person. You, this is how you would do it virtually. You go to the people, you go to the places where the people you want to meet are and you engage. You could write a message. You could, you could write a personal message. Oh, hi, I see that you're in this industry. You know, um, it's about finding, knowing where your people are and going to them like you would in the real, like in the in-person world. It's now a virtual world. Be where they are, go where they are. Um, I feel like this sort of goes into the next question as well. Um, I worked as a financial advisor and my sales have peaked and I have built a website and a Facebook and LinkedIn page, but I don't have the sales and no referrals. How do I get more sales and momentum? How do you get more sales is you know, how do you get more people to know about you? How do you get more people to know how you help them? Let's not make this about sales. How do you get people, the right people, to know more about you? It's about how can I help more people? If you're looking at this, how do I get more sales? Then you're going to get discouraged. Look at this, how do I help more people? Or how do I let more people know how I can help them? That's what this is about. How do I get more exposure? How do I get more presence? What do I need to do? This is why I really want you all to do your SWOT and your UVP, your unique value proposition, which you can find through your SWOT, by the way. It's through your SWOT that you could find your unique uh, value proposition. Okay, because that's how you know where you stand out and what's different. Um, someone asked, should you be changing your strategy, disposition, communication, et cetera, based on the individual client to sort of match their energy? Do you find that that helps with a sale? To change their change your strategy. So yeah, uh, could you just read that question again? It's an interesting question. Um, so changing your strategy slash disposition communication um, based on the initial client. If they're energetic, yeah. do you match that? Yes, yes. To answer your question, in my book we talk about personality traits, different personality traits. We have the the driver personality, who's really fast who wants the answers now. You have the analytical person who wants to like take the time to analyze everything. You have the emotional person who's very emotional about things. You absolutely want to adjust your style to the person you're selling to. Not in, not in an unauthentic way, but you definitely do want to somehow in some way try to 
mirror their, their disposition, which means if I'm a driver and you're an analytical, I can't sell to you like, come on, let's do this. We could do this. You got to do this. I have to say, okay, I understand. So you want, the, you want to know the specs? You want to know this? Okay. I need to go a little slower. I need to give more detail. But if I'm working with a driver, I need to speed up. Okay, so you want this, you want that. Okay, great. Well, so you do need to adjust your personality style to who you're selling to. It's actually part of sales, actually. Know your audience, know who you're selling to and adjust to the person. And I know that we are out of time. So I really wanted to go really quickly to let you know that I do have a self-help mental health channel, The Wise Way to Success. You could it'd be amazing if you, you all could subscribe to it. I'm so close to, um, and you're all watching today, so you could really all help me here. Um, I'm so close to getting the, um, to 700. I'm at 672 subscribers. So it'd be amazing. Could I actually give you the link to the show? I'm gonna yeah, you, can, you can post it in the chat. Post it in the chat. I'm gonna answer your questions. I have a new video actually, Fear of Failure. But I actually wanted to give you, okay, the sound's gonna go on. I wanted to give you the actual link to the show. I'll do that here. How do I do that in the chat? chat yep, just uh, copy paste the URL. I know that we are out of time, but if you want to stay, you don't have to stay. I will answer some questions. But I ask you if you all could please uh, check out my channel support it and help me get to like 700. This is also part of it. You need to ask people for help. You need to ask. That's what I'm doing. I'm asking for help. There's no shame. I don't know where my presentation is. It's a good show, by the way. I was watching it. Okay. Um, I, there's no shame in asking. You know, that's actually, now that I, I'm actually happy we're at the sick way, I'm asking for support. I'm asking for help. I'm a small business and that's, that's how we help people. We ask. So what I'm actually you to do is something I would encourage you to ask. Could you please like, share my channel? Can you please support my business? So I'm asking you all to please help me as a business owner, the way I would encourage you to all to ask people to help. Let's all work together. Let's all build together. You know, I'd love to get to 700. I'm at 673. So let, 673, let's do it, please. Okay, and, and while you all help me, I'm going to answer more questions because I know we're out of time, but I want to help you. Vivian? Yes, sorry, I was muted. So the next question is sort of a follow-up on a previous question, which is how do you set boundaries from your clients who want to befriend you? Um, sorry, what was the question? Uh, how do you set boundaries for clients who want to befriend you? Having a good boundary is just saying, oh, you know, like like keeping it very business. So what they like, so I would say, okay, great, and give back to business. Go back to business. So don't don't cross that line with them. It's kind of like dating, right? If you're not interested, don't give those signals. You know, it's like someone who's married. I'm not. No, I'm married. Like we're not going to go there. Like I'm in a relationship. Let's keep it. You know, it's the same thing. It's the same way. Uh, Vivian, how do I make this public? My link to all and attendees. Uh, okay, oh, you sent it to all panelists? Yeah, so you have to just change it. There you go. Okay, so if you could all, as I answer questions, if you could all help me get to 700, I'd be really appreciative and grateful. Um, and, and I, so what's another question? And please um, subscribe while I answer all these questions. I appreciate it. Yes, Vivian, what's the question? For someone who is starting their business and they haven't found their niche yet, how can they promote their services if they are not yet specialized? They aren't yet okay. clear on how specifically they can serve their clients. So you need to get clarity. Absolutely, you need to get clarity. You need to know what you're selling. If you wanna help people, you need to know what you're, how you're helping them. So you need to get clarity and you need to get very clear on your goal and your mission and your vision. So you need, that's the first thing. If you wanna help people, you need to know what you're going to help them with. So you need to get clear. Very, very important. Clarity key to success. And it doesn't matter how niche you are, as long as you know how you're going to help them, who you're going to help, why you're going to help, and who, um, where are these people I'm going to help. Doesn't matter how niche you are. Doesn't matter. You can do it. Um, so the next question is, do I need to buy Kajabi for my financial planning business? 
Do I need to what? Do I need to buy Kajabi for my financial planning business? No. No, you don't. You don't need to buy anything for your financial planning business. What I would just suggest that you do is um, I use QuickBooks um, for my for my financial to, to be managing all my financial um, needs. Um, right now, it depends on how big you are, but technically you don't need to buy anything right now. Um, so the next question is, is there a subscriber threshold on YouTube for additional features and functions? Um, 700, 1000, et cetera. Yes. yes. So 1000 means I'm actually could monetize the channel. So you need to get to 1000 so you can monetize the channel. What does that mean monetize? It means that basically you could make five cents. I think it's really not a big deal. It's more for credibility and more to get awareness than to make money off YouTube, to be honest. But the threshold is is 1,000 for YouTube. I'll answer that question with another question, with another fact. TikTok is 1,000 to go live. So those are the thresholds that you want to achieve. And obviously on LinkedIn, you want to get to your 500 plus connections. Um, so those are the landmarks, LinkedIn 500, uh, TikTok 1,000, YouTube 1,000. Those are the landmarks that we're looking um, at. So it seems the YouTube link that you sent is uh, the wrong one. It seems to go to a, an advertisement for a Netflix show. Oh, because I was watching that. Okay. Weird. Okay. But here, the wise way, let's see. The wise way. Okay, let's try that. So I was actually watching the, I, don't, I won't spoil it, but I was watching the show behind her eyes and there's a real, I won't spoil it, don't worry, but there's a real twist ending. So I was, was like curious about it. But I recommend that show, by the way, it's really good. Okay, yeah, so that's what the link, <laughs> that's why you saw the link from behind her eyes. It's a really, really good Netflix show. I highly recommend it. It's a good um, show, exactly, it is a good show. And a really, really freaky twist. Okay, any other questions? That looks like it's it for questions. Okay, perfect. So um, I'm going to, so Vivian, could we also speak about um, the upcoming, what am I gonna tell you? The upcoming, um, the upcoming program I'll be teaching. Uh, yes, yeah, so Robert's gonna be offering a course. There's gonna be two sections. Um, one is coming up soon. It is um, March 18th to March 26th on the Thursdays and Friday mornings from 9 to 12. And then we're having a second section of this in May, from May 20th to May 28th. Same thing, Thursday and Friday mornings. Um, and I will post the link in the chat if you want to register. And there's one more question. Okay, there's the question. So I'll give you an opportunity while I answer this last question to subscribe and to check out the show. I'm sorry, check out the program. And what's the last question, Vivian? Can you read it to me? Yes. For a B2C, if you are selling the exact same product, how can you differentiate it if the comp if the competitor if the competitors offer it at a lower price? What do you think about offering installment payments? and keep the same price instead of matching it. Offer what? Did, offer smaller payments? Offer installment payments. This is really, this is really a tricky question. I'll, I'll tell you why, because um, there's different ways you can do this. You don't want to also lose money and you also don't want, you have to make sure that um, it's also not about price. It's also about value. So if they offer the same thing, um, I would necessarily match the price or do different installments. I would make maybe an incentive would be like, you know, if you do this with us, you'll be able to get something like this, I'll offer this. Um, you can make it interesting in different ways. It doesn't have to be finance, just financial. It could be like, if you an extra product, I could offer you like this. Um, if you take this package, we could offer you that. So it's not necessarily just about installments. And you're, you're making it too much about dollar for dollar. It's dollar for value. You need to also make this about your value and the value of them working with you. 
So maybe it's not just about money, maybe it's also about value. So maybe you could offer something that they don't offer the competitors besides just the money. So it's not just about price because I'll give you a very truthful example. Look at Starbucks for coffee, 350 a coffee. It's not about price. They see the value and we see the value in going to Starbucks for a 350 coffee versus, you know, Tim Hortons for a $2 coffee. So it's, it's not even about the price. It's about the value. It's about, you know, unless you're talking about the exact same product. And even in that case, you know, maybe your service is different. Maybe you could offer something a little bit different than the other the competitor could offer. Don't just make it about money. I think we, we tend to make things just about money. Um, so there was one more question on the Q&A, which was, how do we know if our video is good or not on our social media? I'll tell you how you know. Is it clear? Is it well filmed? Are you are you speaking clearly? Are you conveying your message? Does it have your does it does it have your vision, your clarity in the, the video? Then it's good. It's good. You don't we don't need to overthink this. Do not as long as you're clear, you're concise, it's well filmed, the lighting is good, you're speaking clearly, it's good. It doesn't have to be it's not a Hollywood production. It's basically you speaking about what you want to talk about sharing your message and doing this in a way that is clear, concise, and professional. Let's not make this about um, Hollywood. It's good. You're your own, usually we're our own worst, worst critic. People are not gonna notice if you know you, you stutter on a word for a second. Just be you, be authentic, film it properly, speak well, you could do it. And that's, it's good. I believe in you. Um, and I think that is everything. Thank you. I want to thank you all for tuning in today, taking the time this afternoon to uh, to to tune into this presentation. I hope you'll subscribe, and I hope that you'll also register for the uh, training. It's going to be amazing. More detail, more time. There is so much to talk about, and I do have, you know, um, three successful businesses that are built from the ground up by myself from the ground up, no help, no financial help from anybody, from the ground up, by myself. Three businesses by myself, so I will help you. I've done it, I've, you know, I've gotten exploited, um, I spent money on, I've done it, I've, I've, I've done it. So I can help you with the tricks, the strategies, the tools, or what the know-how, the what to, to get you to help your business, whether it's B2B or B2C, um, I will help you build your business, build your brand, and help give you that support that you need. We all need that. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, Robert, you're the host, so you're gonna have to end the meeting. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you all. Thank you for the positive comments and thank you all for attending. Hope to see you at the um, at the course coming soon.